You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Ah, Ryan's right behind me, or right in front of me, behind me. <laughs> right That's, behind him. As I take an exhale. My spirit is behind you. Your spirit. Just gently massaging your neck. Dude, another, <laughs> another good episode, man. Another yeah. good episode. Last week was uh, Martin Starr. Mm -hmm. uh, the week before, Brandon Routh. We're putting good content out. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting people, uh, you know, I'm doing my best to get guests that people care about. Uh, <laughs> and more importantly, I think that if you listen, like let's say you're listening today because you love this guest, maybe you might go back if you like this and go, hey, you know, I'm going to, because I learn about each guest. Mm -hmm. And I think that each get each uh, the audience they agree. Listeners go, you know, I'm listening now, even if I don't know anybody. Yeah, because you find out because some people, I just you find something. Yeah, in each one that you're like you might be able to relate to. I, I say it each time, but you know, I, I really believe it. Did you do anything fun this week? And you're done with jury duty, thank God. Thank God. Yeah, I'll tell you all about it. You almost jumped off my roof. It wouldn't have killed you though. <laughs> it was... It's not that high. God, no, but it's worth it for the experience. Honestly, like it because I've been putting it off for so long, and it's it's easy to sort of, you know, put it aside, and just keep pushing it and pushing it, yeah, and then yeah. just like to have finally done it, it's kind of a relief. Yeah, I use my. Uh, I've had so many back surgeries and stuff, so my doctor just says no. He's not sitting down for any time, any length of time. God. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll give you the back problems and neck problems, and then I'll switch. Sure. I'd rather be healthy and be able to sit in a freaking chair for sure. four hours. Although I'm doing it now. Mm -hmm. uh, big shout out to the patrons. Uh, patrons on Patreon. Uh, it's just another way to uh, help the podcast out. And uh, we appreciate it. <sighs> you have no idea. It's so nice to see all these people just like going, you know, and you get a lot of cool stuff. There's extra footage inside of uh, me video that you get every month. Uh, some tiers you get to see the guests, upcoming guests and ask questions and merch packages. And I, I just love it. I talk about its community. So that's cool. Uh, Wizard World June 5th coming up. Uh, before that, May 9th, we have Miami. We're doing a con, Tom and I. Smallville Nights. So just look at my Twitter and Twitter and all that stuff. Um, so there you have that. Uh, this guest is, uh, she's been on before, but she wasn't filmed. And um, she made me cry. She, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I mean, a tear came down my eye and I didn't, I didn't address it. She just tells the story and she goes, are you crying? I was like, fuck. I, it was just, she's such a great person. I, I love listening to her. She has a great podcast. I was just on Pajama Pants. She's an extraordinary woman, a great mom, a great wife. She talks about her shit, though. Like, you know, she's not perfect. We're not perfect. So she talks about, you know, raising kids. She talks about, you know, working with MS. She talks about things that, again, people aren't always so open with. And I, I, I like that, that you, you enjoyed this one, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Cause I didn't know a lot about her going into it. I never watched the Sopranos, but she was just super sweet and just had a really nice story. Yeah. And she's dealing with a lot. Yeah. I mean, I you didn't know, know about any of that. I think anytime, you know, we, we always think our problems are so big. And then when you sometimes see other people's problems, yeah. you know, it's not that your problems are less. It's just like, I look at her and I'm like, dude, get the fuck up and do something. Get the fuck up and seriously. You know, she's got two kids. She's married. She's working. She has MS. She's doing a podcast. It's like, what the F, dude? Like, you know what? Get up. Do you have MS, Ryan? I don't. Okay, neither do I, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So you know what? For Jamie, for yourself, yeah. Get up. Sorry, I don't know why I said that. Jamie, I know you're listening. I love you. Uh, dearly. I just want to say for the record, folks, you're seeing, oh, Michael wore that shirt last week. Well, here's what happened. We're doing intros and outros for two episodes. So dumb. Shit. I don't want to go up the stairs. I'm lazy to get another shirt on that's probably similar to this <laughs> shirt because I wear the same clothes every day. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to just do the Farley every episode. All right. Uh, let's get inside Jamie Lynn Sigler. It's my point of view. Listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. You look great. I'm not just saying that. You you do look great. Thank you. That's very nice. I I, I always that's such an awkward thing to receive. <laughs> to say. Don't ever say you look great again to me. I thought you were <laughs> no, gonna say. I mean just like what do I say back? You know what you say? What? Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Okay. I'm not good at receiving compliments. Well, that's something like I, I, I've talked about it before, but like, don't you think it's it's just better if, if there's an understanding? Like, 
If I say, hey, I like your shirt, instead of going, oh, it's an old shirt. Right. This shirt is, why don't you? Why do we why do, do we? that? I, I don't, because maybe we don't believe the person because we hear yes. so many compliments and yes. we don't think that they're, they're real. It's Hollywood. It's but I definitely think that part goes, of it. But don't you think that's all over the world? It's like people go, oh my God, you look great. And they're like, no, I, did, I didn't even sleep yesterday. I was, I was drunk. I don't. We're afraid to share our like happiness where she we're afraid to share we were afraid to be judged by our reaction like if i would have been like yeah i felt good walking out the house today you'd be like oh she's a little bit of a cunt I, <laughs> a little <laughs> bit of a cunt god that girl she had a good day and she talked she agreed to, yeah i said hey you look like you're having a good day she was actually i really had, what a cunt yeah she had a good day that's what i'm afraid of do you think maybe when someone says it that I don't know. Is it an insecurity? Is it just like you feel better if it's self-deprecating? Like you're you're being. I feel more relatable if I'm self-deprecating. Right. It's weird. You find community and like common ground in like the shitty shit. Yeah. We don't come together for the joy. How are we you? come together for our sorrows? That's true. So so uh, sort of. Are like, you writing this down? Are you writing this down? <laughs> right? So in other words, if I said, God, you know, Jamie, I mean, the, the, you're, you know, you, you're, uh, I don't know, you, you look tired. Are you tired? And you're like, Yeah, I'm just so tired. God, Rosenbaum, you look like shit. Yeah, I feel like shit. And then we're just drowning in our own misery. My nanny loves to tell me when I look tired. I don't like when people. That's the. I one, don't mind it when she does because I'll be like, Yeah, that's why I need you. Do you know what I think looking tired? I think people may make the mistake what? when they say you look tired. I then immediately go, God, man, I, I, I can't, I don't even want to look at myself in the mirror because I look <laughs> no. like shit. What, you know, you're really bad when somebody points it out that you look tired. But you know what I think it is? What? I don't think they're saying you look tired, like your appearance, like your face looks tired <laughs> your eyes are t your face is your smile is tired your cheeks are tired your skin is tired i think they're looking at you and they're going your disposition you're catching your vibe watch, like, if i go like this watch if i'm going like this you know i'm like jamie i've had a great freaking week i probably don't look tired right no but if i was like this i was like <sighs> yeah so how, how's everything going? You look yeah, tired, you, you seem tired. It's all in your energy. Yes. So when they say you seem tired, yes. maybe they should change it up. Maybe they should say, Ryan, yeah. you look good, but you seem tired. Yes, that's it. Because I don't want to hear I look tired. No. I don't know if I like that either, though. You seem tired. You don't seem like seem? Tired. You look good, but you seem like a piece of shit. You seem like a piece <laughs> of shit. You know what? Yeah, it's, I, I get that. It's almost like, God, you, you, you know, you... You look like you're on cocaine. Your body's moving around a lot, but That's your what face is. is just horrible. Looking. You're saying I look like I'm on meth is what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the the fun part about kids is, is they oh. just, they just, they don't care about a repercussion they totally live in honesty and truth and that's it so and what do you hear what's the worst thing you've ever heard from your kid did they ever say things like there's someone around you they go he's fat you know my i've heard my son since he started like being in elementary school like dropping things like that like that person's fat or this sucks and i'm like hey yo hey, hey, we hey. don't say that dude and the so, husband's laughing about it he's like ah. that's the problem is sometimes like there's laughter that follows mm. it because they're so cute and you know they don't know what they're saying but like this is i think that's your true job as a parent is just give them a moral compass and like understand how to not hurt people's feelings other than that i really don't have much influence he is who he is <laughs> do they tell you, you look tired yeah. Oh my God. He'll tell me every, you don't look good. I don't like your hair like that. Um, take that makeup off. That shirt looks look funny. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. Totally. And I'll be <laughs> like, I don't it's know the only constructive criticism I really accept well. I'm like, oh, it doesn't. Okay. I don't know how I had a response. I don't know. People always say you'd make a great parent. Cause I think I'm a you child, would. but I think I would, I would fire back. Like most people, mature adults, they'd be, you know, the kid would be like, that sweater looks ugly. I'm like, yeah, well, you can't even read. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like, so what, what's the, what you're going to throw me, uh, you're gonna throw me some shit. You just create <laughs> another little Rosenbaum. What yeah, do you mean? That's not good. You know, <laughs> that's what the world needs. Another Rosenbaum. Yeah. Well, what I would do and I do with my friends is I, I'm affectionate. I think, although I did that test that, um, love language. But it's a test you take and you could find out, yeah, yeah. you know, what you, wh who you are, what your love language is. So what are the five? I think mine was quality time. Get ready for this. Um, 
affectionate right was last like like t- like being touched i guess you just gave such a good hug when i got here yeah but i think i am affectionate when i feel comfortable when i feel like it's really authentic and that's when you should be affectionate. I, I know but i tend most of the time if i'm not in a relationship or if i'm just talk seeing someone i don't want to give them too much to make them lead them on unless i know i'm in it i don't think that's a bad thing i know but i'd say it's, it's intimacy it's a fear of intimacy mm. is what it is that's not good i'm well, working on that that's okay. You don't want to. You don't want to mislead anybody. No, but quality time was number one. Quality time was number one. Um, What's I like the other giving. one? I'm a, I'm giving, a giver. Gifts, I'm giving. absolutely a giver. Not even on my radar. You don't I like could, giving. I, I no. I love giving gifts, but like receiving gifts, I could. Oh, yeah. I could give two no, shits. Me about. too. I don't want to receive them. I want to no. give them. I. I yes, I, I, I love give, giving gifts. I give more than I get. I don't. And you know what? It's, number two, I think was words of affirmation. Just like Ryan, mm-hmm. you look really handsome today. I like that, that better than the other thing you said. What was that? You look like shit? You look tired? Yeah. Well, your shirt, is that blue? I'm colorblind? Yeah, it's yeah. blue. That blue shirt really- Midnight uh, blue? It yeah. uh, does something with your dark eyes. I don't know what it does, but it, it uh, you look really good. Does something so, positive. Some, but I, I'm re- I would be the best husband if that's what women wanted, because I'm genuinely like, your hair. I immediately, if I don't see someone for weeks, I go, you did something with your hair. I'm like- yeah and yeah. every every boyfriend or husband's gonna be like you fuck yeah I'm like, sorry i just noticed those things i don't know why yeah maybe i'm a hairdresser i feel in a secret like you life. and i discover this every time that we would have made a really good couple do you think that's that's what i like i like receiving affirmation oh, yeah. positive affirmations see that would work because i like to do that and i'm genuine about it i would yes, always be like are. god you look so like when i you walked in yeah. I'm surprised you look this good. Really? Why? Because I have two kids? I think it's everything. You've been through hell. You yeah. work all the time. You're married. You have two kids. You have MS. Yeah. I mean, these things, can, I don't have MS and I feel like <laughs> shit. So, I, I mean, I could easily look like shit and you, you're radiant. I'm sure you fight things all the time. Sure. You're dealing with so oh much. Oh my God. I had a terrible morning. What would happen in your morning? I just, my six-year-old is just really hard. Why? When he's great, he's fucking great. But when he's not great, it's just so annoying. And to, like yesterday, I took him to hockey and I'm watching him and all he's doing is checking kids. Like he's <laughs> like not checking listening. them out. Like no, checking like them. Hitting them. Yes. Checking. Yes. That's what I thought. Hockey yeah. checking. Just in case right? That's what it's called. People needed to know. Sorry. No, checking. On the ice. Checking. There, there's a them. cross check, which is illegal. There's a hip check. We, the hip he goes in. He's doing all of them. Back check. Yeah. Checks. All of them. And I texted my husband and I'm like, yo, we've, I think we might have the kid that like, I hate, like people don't like. Like, I'm worried that he's annoying and to other people. And like, I don't like that this is his instinct. And it's like, it's a real issue as a parent, because obviously I think my kid's the greatest, but then you're also seeing the side of him and you're like, oh, and it's nothing anyone did. It's who he is. And he's figuring life out. And then I feel bad, like also talking shit about my kid. But like, and he really like, everything's a fight. Like, go eat breakfast. No. Go brush your teeth. No. Go oh. get dressed. I'm like, I literally looked at him this morning. I was like, Bo, just know this. Because then he's good. By the end of the day, he's like, you know, because he got the Xbox taken away and the iPad taken away yesterday. And he's like, I-, I hear him in the shower being like, I hate myself. I don't belong in this family. And like, part of me is like, okay, that's for show. But then another part of me is like, oh shit, do I need to pay attention to these words and make sure these aren't like, you know. I hate myself. I don't belong. But, I mean, he was saying it loud enough so oh I could hear gosh. it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He's, he wants attention. Yes. So this morning I said to him, I was like, look, Bo, I'm sure you and I are going to get in a fight today. I'm sure I'm going to yell and I'm going to feel bad about it. I'm sure you're going to do something, misbehave, and then you're going to get reprimanded. Just know this, no matter what, I think you're the greatest and I love you. Mm, important. So, just remember that. And you know, he's like I'm looking like everywhere but me. And I'm like, look me in the eye, dude. Tell me you heard me. He's like, I did. I love you. And then the rest of the morning, it's just that shit. Like, and then he he's VIP at school this week. So they get to like bring things in. And so he wants to bring his hockey bag with all his goalie gear. It smells and like I'm like Fritos. Cheetos, actually. Oh, well, whatever. And I'm like, Bo, you can't bring like all your hockey gear to school. Like the whole huge, the, he could fit in his hockey bag. It's like enormous. <laughs> and just the fight this morning. And I just started crying. Cause I was like, cause I also have a two year old who's like demands a lot and he's obsessed with me, which I love, but it demands a lot of my time and attention. Right. I also am a wife. 
I also have a career. I also have MS, like you said. Like I've got a lot. I have a lot of roles what does he do, in my life. What does Bo do when he sees you cry? On his knees, holding my face, telling me he loves me. So sad that so I'm So that's crying. the trigger. He needs to see that you're really hurting, that he's really upset you before he could just kind of take it easy on yeah. you. So he's pushing every button until he goes, ah, I got her. So there, there, there's some psychology there. Yeah. He knows that, you know, I'm going to go. And when she starts crying, then I'll maybe be good. I don't normally I don't cry. Know. I try not to. But like today I lost it. I, he, he was rattled by it. Was it a good cry? <laughs> like, what can I do? No, it was just more like a hand, like just my head down in my hands. And like, I could feel him like hovering over me. And then he like tapped me. He's like, are you crying? And I'm like, yes, dude. Like, Have you this ever... is too much. How hard is it to say, yes, I'm crying because of fucking you. I didn't say that. I know, I know. That's I wouldn't how do that I felt, either. Though. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, but I'm sure Sandler would come out of me every once in a while. You know, if I'd go, would you just do what I tell you? That's Farley. Sandler would be like, <laughs> Yeah, it's something we could have talked about yesterday. <laughs> you know, I think I would we'll that's how I would channel well. I'd have the, to work on that. Right. But you said something, I'm gonna rewind because I was trying. I was like, stay, stay focused on what she's saying. I want to hear it. But also I'm going to go back about three and a half minutes. Okay. And you said that, I, I, I don't know. Do I have the annoying kid? Yeah. Is, is it the, I have been around parents that I'm like, are you fucking blind and deaf that you can't see what a monster <laughs> your fucking kid is? Like I've had him in my house and I, dude, I had a kid in my house once. Yeah. I mean, there were other families. That sounds weird. I had a kid in my house once. And Ryan's like, what? Like, no, not like that. You know, I mean, one time, friends, one time you had a kid. And I remember there was a kid over with his mom or something. And the kid has a, uh, let's just say a, uh, a knack for fucking shit up. Oh. And he oh. does. And I think he does it on purpose. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be behind this kid one time. While he was walking around my house, I just happened to be walking behind him at the time. It wasn't like I wasn't following the child to see yeah. what he was going to do. I had this Lord of the Rings chess set. Don't ask me why, but I have it. Fancy. And he just stopped for a second when he looked over to it and he just backhanded oh all the pieces. Oh my God. Oh my God. All to the no. floor and walked on. And I go, hey. And he turned around. And I go, what the heck was that about, man? And he's like, I go, dude, look. You don't knock people's stuff over. You don't do that stuff. Yeah. All right. You don't do that in someone else's house. I'm sure you don't do it in your own house. That's not cool. Nobody likes that kid. Mm -mm. All right. I like you. You're a good kid. But right now, that kind of crap, people aren't going to like you. So don't do that. Good something, for you. something like that. And he just Where goes, were his parents? And he just went like this. You know, that look that, mm, yeah. <laughs> you know. I, but I wanted to make sure he didn't Where cry. Where were his parents? Like, though? like it was. A, uh, th they were there. Did they notice that he was doing this shit and say anything? Cause that's my issue. I don't like when parents are so into like being around other adults. Like, trust me, I get it when it's like yeah. a reprieve, but like also be responsible for your kid. Like my yeah. husband and I, that's, I'm very grateful. Cutter and I are like super on top of our kid. Like, Cutter was he respectful? Bo Jack. Yeah, what yeah. a cool name, right? Cutter Bo Jack. That's yeah. like a cool family name. <laughs> But go, yeah, yeah, but you're aware of it. I'm you're like, very aware. I'm okay. like, also, did he say thank you when you gave that to him? Like, I'm, I'm that mom. Oh, that, that's good. I'm that's good. on him because I know he hears it. I know it'll click one day. Like, I know. I and let me say this. Bo is his worst at home. When he's with other people and other adults, he's great. And I think I guess I would rather it be that way than him being like, you know a dick to other kids and other yeah, adults. You don't want to be a bully. No, I no, not at all. And that's I'm hard, so grateful that, that he's, that right, right. he's really kind to other right. kids to the point where he gets upset. He won't watch the Sandlot anymore or Mighty Ducks because he doesn't like when kids are being mean to other kids. Oh, that's nice. That's a good thing. Because if he's liking things like that and animals being killed, then he, that's that's on your way to being a serial killer. Totally. And you don't want that. Totally. No, he as might as, be annoying, as as but he's not a serial killer. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important I mean, to show the love, I love you. But there's also like, I think that, again, I'm not a father and everybody listening is probably gonna be like, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. But I'm just telling you what I would do theoretically. Theoretically, if my kid, we went to another house and I saw him doing stuff, I would tell him before we got there, I want you to have a great time. Mm -hmm. I want you to enjoy yourself. But mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, if you do something and I say stop and you continue on or you break something, you knock something out, we're just going. There's not going to be, no, dad, please. You're going to start crying and be upset, but we're going. 
And the only, the, you're only going to learn if I do that. If I put my foot down and we leave the party, I'm upset because we had to leave. You're upset. And the next time we go to a party, maybe your dumb ass won't do it again. And that's how I feel. Bury him with love. I love you. I'm proud of you. You'll never be stupid in my eyes. Just be honest. Be the best you can be. You know, all the things I didn't hear. But, you know, these things are important. But also, like, you know, my friend Chris was telling me once, he's like, man, these kids nowadays, nobody smacks them or gives them a smack on the no. ass or you can't talk about that shit. He's like, man, my dad busted my ass. And he's like, I'm like, yeah, my dad busted my ass every once in a while. And I'm like, it's like, and you know what? I didn't do shit again. Yeah. I learned. No, yeah. You get a smack on the ass and people don't talk about it now. I got paddled in school. Now that's bad because that's, that's bad, embarrassing. I got, I got spanked and hit for sure. Yeah. I think most kids our generation did. What are you, 38? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Would you research me or something? I yes, don't know. I'm 38. But yeah, no, but no, you can't do that now. No, you can't. Mm -hmm. And you can't hit another kid's kid. <laughs> another adult's kid. I know you can't. The good obviously. old days. No, but the, you know, it's like. You can coach Bo. I bet you'd like Bo. Oh, I play hockey, so I He's I such a dude. You'd love him. I would love, like, I, would I was love saying Bo. when I got I in this room, Bo. I was like, he would love. He has, whenever my husband goes out of town or I go out of town, like to, you know, for us to feel better about our guilt of being away, he gets right. a new jersey. So he has 17 hockey jerseys right now. Are you so he's serious? building his little collection. Oh, maybe I can get him one. Oh, that's sweet. I can get him I'll one. tell you what team he doesn't have. What? I don't know. I have to look. I'll I have to a, go through a, his closet. Uh, San Jose Sharks, Burnsy. He's one of my good buddies. He doesn't have Brent Sharks. Burns. I, no, he, I mean, I'm not saying he has like sign. He has like ones that he wears, like in oh, his closet. Oh, he wants jerseys that he would wear. Yes. Oh, okay. I'll get yeah. him Rangers. He has, he has ah, three crap. Rangers ones. All right. So listen, while, yeah. been a, while you've been away, because you, it's been a while. Yeah. You have, you've been working a lot. I actually quit acting in between though. I quit acting for a year. You quit acting when you're having the second child, Jack. Mm -hmm. That's when you quit, but you've been going on lately, right? I just started back again in the summer. Now, how hard is that with a family and dealing with MS and getting cast and people knowing the situation and yeah. going, can I do this? And the studios going, can Jamie do this? Can she get through the scenes? Can mm -hmm. she, are they patient? Are people nice? Are they, how, how does that even work? I, it's hard enough to get an acting job for sure. But when you have something that you're like, well, this is part of me. Yeah. You know, what do you do? I'm still grappling with like walking into an audition room, like owning it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's out there. People know it is what it is. Thank God, because you're so open and that's important. Only so only the past couple of years. I mean, I wasn't for a uh, long right. time. Well, let me take it back. So first I quit acting because um, I kind of just needed to give myself a chance to see if I gave a fuck anymore about it. Mm. You know, sometimes you can get in the grind and like the hamster wheel of it. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. Like, I know I love it when I'm doing it, but I don't love the getting the job part. Like, I don't love auditioning. I don't love the stress of it all. Like, and I was just like, you know, I got two kids. I have a lot on my plate. Like, I need to really see... If I love this, I'm going to step away from it for a little while. And I thought that my um, reps were going to be like so supportive because a lot of the times I think, and it's my own thing, I guess, but I just assume that people still want to work with me because I'm nice and like of they love they me, do. but not because of any value of like my talent or anything. Uh, see, you and suffer from the same shit we all do. Like we're not good enough, yeah. but, but they like me. Of course you're good enough. Well, when I had my manager, I thought, I truly thought my manager was going to be like, I support this, James. I love you. He didn't support you. He was like, fuck no, you're not quitting. I'm going to give you a few weeks and then you're going to call me. And I was like, but I get, but it was a year. And he kept calling and he kept calling and I was like, not yet, not yet. And I had this moment where I was sitting on the floor with my kids and it was like a nice moment. Everyone was playing nicely, like nothing was wrong. And it was like, my breath got taken away. And I was like, oh, I am not cut out to be a stay-at-home mom. Like there is, I have to honor that there's like <laughs> other shit I still want to do. are you okay? Are you crying? Yeah, literally. Yes, but I this isn't like, about you this time. I was like, holy fuck. So I went back to acting class because I wanted to see. I'm like, okay, I had that moment, but like I want to get back in this grind and like see. Acting class. So you didn't jump back into auditioning back. In, wait a minute. 
Which you, I haven't been in in, I don't know, 10 I years. I almost feel like acting class would be even scarier. Beyond everybody's 20 and amazingly gorgeous and just moved to LA and like, you know. And, and then what there's happens m- in an acting class? Because it's been a while since I've been in an acting class. Oh. But do you like, they give you scenes and you have to memorize them? Mm-hmm. Is that hard to do since you hadn't done it in a year? Mm-hmm. So how long did it take you? I don't, I mean, I do it during naps or like, you know, when the kids went to bed and I took it super seriously. And I, I loved that I wasn't great. At first, like I was a little rusty and I, I like, I see these kids in there that like shut down when they start getting like, um, direction or, or redirection. Like these literally these shut young down. kids are like, they're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but me, I'm like, uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it that way. Oh yeah, you're right. I do do that. Like I love being dissected because and how I'm, long did you do this for? I'm still in it. How long has this been? Almost a year. In April, I went back into acting class and then I got my first job in June. And then I worked straight from June all the way till now. Uh, I did this really fun, um, like, and everything was offered. I don't know what happened with the universe because I told you, like, I fucking hate auditioning. And I can't remember the last time, to be honest, I've booked anything from an audition, but everything, it just kept coming in. Like, I did a little movie and then I did this sitcom for Adult Swim with Tim and Eric. Um, the comedians yep, yep. and had a great time during doing that. I and I then I you did. I dumb look. You go, Tim and Eric. And I go, I know you didn't react. Like, you, you don't know like, them. Like, oh, I yeah. would figure I, you would know that. No, I was just listening and I just didn't oh, know. Okay. I didn't know you needed me to go. Uh huh. I did. Yeah. I did. Oh, fuck yeah. Do you know that well, one? You either know uh, them or you don't. I do know them. Okay. Yeah, I do know. Okay. Them. Yeah. Same, and then yeah. I did a bunch of indies. I did a TV movie and then I did another one. And then I, I finished the year in December. I literally worked back to back to back to back, which was kind of insane to go from like not working at all to like not stop working. But it was almost what I needed. Um, to get back in the swing of things and understand that like my kids still love me. They don't feel neglected. I hate the word balance, but I can do both. And then the last thing I did was this short film in December. And it was the most gratifying acting experience of my entire life. And what I was, was it? it's the short film called I'm on fire with this director, Michael Spicchia. And it was like, just fucking gritty. I've never done a short before where it took 12 days to shoot 12 minutes. Like if you think about like the, the detail that was shot and it was amazing. Could you have done that without the acting class? Sure. I could have done it. But maybe it not you as well. You wouldn't have been as good. Mm-mm. You wouldn't have been able to learn your lines as fast because your it's muscle. It's not that. No. What was it? I think it's just more of like feeling rooted and like, I don't know. I'm come from the school of like, I don't, I don't feel comfortable getting something unless I worked for it. Um, so it feels like I'm like doing my work. So it, I feel like I belong there more. Not only that, but I think, you know, whether you're an actor or not, but like, it's almost like they, when, when you get hired, just let's just hire Michael Rosenbaum or mm-hmm. let's hire Jamie Lynn Sigler and you get hired. You're almost like, well, I don't know exactly what they want me to do. Right. And so right. then you're hired and then all of a sudden you're doing it. And if you had auditioned and got it, then they're like, oh, you're like, well, whatever I did, that's what they want. So I'm just going to do that. It's kind of weird. Like, ah, I hear do you, you guys want this? I don't exactly know what you want. Am I doing it right? Are you like, so there could be like that. Yes. And then to also reference like the whole MS conversation of it all. Um, in order for me to feel comfortable, I have to have like the same conversation with everyone I'm about to work with, which is like, here's my limitations. What are they? I can't run. High heels are hard. Um, Walking long distances, I'm going to start to limp. Um, So like, you know, keeping the shots shorter. Mornings are better? No, no. I have full energy. Like, fortunately, it doesn't affect me cognitively, energy-wise. Not Everything's just kind of like the waist down. And it's just more it gets tired. But if I sit and rest... And I'll always tell you if I need anything. I've never, ever needed a break. I've never told anyone I needed a break because I'm not trying to like be a superhero. I just haven't. Um, And then directors and people are willing to work around it. So I've been very fortunate. You know, I, I still feel like a burden and I still feel bad that I have to have that conversation and I'm comforted every time and being like, please, Jamie, everybody has something like this is no big deal. We can figure this out. Um, but that's not, you know, it sounds, you're really strong because I wish I could have these conversations <laughs> about my own things mm-hmm. beforehand. So like, Hey, listen, uh, 
I, it, their insecurities about yes. myself and like, you know, if, if I'm this or if I'm that or, you know, wouldn't I, it be just, nice to do that? Wouldn't though? it be great? Hey, listen, man. Yeah. You never get hired. <laughs> They're like, uh, what? This guy is nervous. He gets anxiety attacks. He's like, you yeah, know, I don't certain... get any of those things. Well, that's good. Maybe because all of my energy is channeled and focusing on my physicality of everything. Do but you ever notice it? Do you ever notice things when you're watching? Pick it apart all the time. Like you're like, uh, that walk right there. The, all the time. That's because of the MS. And I hate it, which is why I don't watch myself a do lot of the time. you ever ask them, can you go to a close up or can you cut in? No, I've, ne- I've never gotten the balls to do that. I always assume that they're going to do what looks best and I trust them. But I mean, I catch it and it's a bummer. It's And sometimes it's like, you know, I can feel like I'm doing great and like there's still something there. And it's, uh, it's like, I don't know, it's a reality check. It's... It's, it's, it's not the most fun for me, you know, because I also, you know, when I'm not working and momming, like all of my, are sitting here with you, I'm, you know, like really heavily focused on fighting this all the time and trying to get as well as I can. And, and, you know, like right now while we're talking, are you fighting it? <laughs> no, I'm relaxed. You are. There's yes. nothing about you right now that you're feeling like nothing. There's nothing, uh, abnormal. No. And you no. take medications. Uh, twice a year and then I have twice like, a year well like an intravenous chemotherapy twice a year and it's, it's like an immunosuppressant Does that help? it's well the only MS meds that are really out there are ones that suppress the disease so slow it down I've been stable for over nine years with no changes and no changes mm-mm. and Is that's that... why I feel confident working too because it's not I tell him like it's not like I'm gonna wake up one day and like not be able to move or this or that like the, my MS is not that Right. Sometimes I wish it was relapse remitting so I could have really great days and then be like, oh, this is a bad day. But I guess if I had to choose, it would much normalcy. Some kind of normalcy. The only way I can work is like, this is how it is. Right. Because then I guess that is more of a crapshoot. Yeah. But what about like, you know, our friend Selma Blair? Yeah. She, she's, she's in a different level. She has a very different disease than me. And, and what is sucks. that? I mean, it's hers is relapse remitting, but hers affects her like so many Speech different ways. It's her- so, it's, it's heartbreaking. So it's there's heartbreaking. all different levels of this disease. Mm-hmm. It's not just everybody who has it has the same thing. Everybody who has it, it lives the same. Different. So people could live long. They could live short. Mm-hmm. They, you know, mm-hmm. that's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. And so you, have you ever thought of like, why should I watch myself? I'm going to do the best work I can because you kind of want to see yourself and see the work you did. I most of the time don't watch myself. Did you used to? No, actually. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I think I, get, I think I get did. nervous to watch. No, I've never actually never. I've only seen the first season of Sopranos and then the first episode of every season and the last very last episode. I think I just get a well, that's because I got MS closely after. Not that I was symptomatic at all, but I think it's just it just got in my head. And I just also too like I like in class, like I love somebody else picking apart my acting that has perspective. But I just feel like I don't have proper perspective on myself. Right. Why put my side? I'd much rather watch like Vanderpump Rules than <laughs> that. Would you? Yes. I commend you. I mean, without it, I don't mess. have a choice. I mean, well, you do. I don't a- feel like I have. I I don't feel like. I don't feel like I need like applause for the way I do I things. Mean, do you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like I truly feel like if anyone was in my position, they would do the same things as me. I do. I'd like to believe that because a I have kids. B, I have dreams and like, I'm 38. Like, I, I don't want to throw it all in. Right. You know, I just, I don't know. Are I tried days? it. I Are, tried it and you told you I sat in the floor and I was like, fuck, fuck no, this. I can't do it. I bet it was when you first got diagnosed and all this and you're going through it, you're probably, there are probably a lot of days you're like, fuck it. I don't even want to do anything. I'm just, oh, yeah. I'm done. I could. I have every right to. I have every excuse in the book. I think that's what I've become very conscious of lately was like, I am done allowing ms to be an excuse like i it's it's a very easy have i used it like out of sex and things like that for sure but like wait wait wait, what you know like in times when my husband's like hey and i'm like i can't be i'm so tired my legs hurt like but i'm lying you could just you know? say ms sweetie i'm, Keep I'm it just short. gonna say to my husband ms it's like, oh, God, i just want to f and ms <laughs> so you just keep it with letters i want to f ms sweetie i guess no i could f. MS. I guess I could. MS and F. I choose not to do that because it's way too easy. And I don't, I told you I like to work for things. So it's, that's the easy route. I mean, I think it's with, with anything else. I mean, if like, it's probably, I don't know if this analogy is going to work, Ryan. 
Try. Right? Whenever I look at Ryan, I always know something's not going to work. I'll cut it out if it doesn't. Yeah. Well, like depression, like anxiety. Sure. I don't know. I think that if you let it get the best of you, if you're just like, I give up, I'm just going to let this anxiety ruin my life and I'm going to let this depression take over and I'm not going to get help and I'm not going to exercise. I'm not going to like MS, obviously MS, you can't get rid of, mm -hmm. but you could control something. You can at least be the best version of yourself. You could feel the best that you can feel by doing the things that you know will help or the things because rolling over and just saying, fuck it, you're going to deteriorate. If you just didn't exercise and you didn't do this mentally, this would debilitate you more and the disease would become more uh, for sure. Right. So I think that's the th same thing with depression. You, yes. you don't go see a doctor. You don't, you know, if you're drinking caffeine at 11 o'clock at night, you're going to, this anxiety is going to take over. I've right. seen this happen with me. Right. So it's a but matter of you have to it, let yourself feel though. Like I definitely let myself have days where I'm like, this fucking sucks. I'm sad. I'm angry. Do you just cry sometimes? Oh, yes. I have to. I'd explode. <laughs> Inside of You is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace. That's right. I, cool. You know, Squarespace, it's just, you know, I, I'm not, you're a little more creative than I am. We've talked about this, but, you know, I think you are. Come on. Well, especially in the art world. No? Like drawing art? No, I'm not. T I'm talking about like creating a beautiful website. You could probably do that. Uh, well, I mean, with the, t with the proper template and everything I could do. That. I don't even know what a template is. It's the little outline. Turn your cool idea into a new website. Showcase your work. How many people have these ideas and they're like, I don't even know what to do. And then the idea, all of a sudden you see somebody else two months later and they get the idea and they do it. They get, you know what they do? They go to Squarespace and they figure it out. Blog or publish content, sell products and services of all kinds, promote your physical or online business, announce an upcoming event or special product and more. What I like is Squarespace does... Uh, pretty much everything for you in so many ways. They give you these beautiful, as you say, templates created mm -hmm. by world-class designers. Powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online. Customize the look, the feel, settings, and more with just a few clicks. Built-in search engine optimization, free and secure hosting, 24-7 award-winning customer support, nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Make it yourself. Easily create a website by yourself. Make it stand out. Make it so stand out with a beautiful website. That's all. That's all you have to do. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IOU to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com. Enter code IOU. You know what's funny? I'm about to go do something called EMDR. Have you ever heard yes, of this? Yes, I did it. Did you, how was it? I'm I doing it next it. week. EMDR. It's like app, uh, rapid eye movement. It's, um, so, uh, you know, everybody who listens to me knows I went to a wellness center like, uh, last year. I don't oh, know if you knew. I didn't know that. Yeah. I just wanted to feel better and get better and all these things. And, you know, I had some, I think what happens is a lot of people have traumas mm -hmm. and they don't know what, they don't really know how severe they are. For instance, when I heard about EMDR, I heard, oh, they give this to, um, vets right people who fought in wars and have seen the worst things that none of us could even imagine and i think oh well it's for, it works for them because that's real trauma my trauma is not real your trauma is it can't be uh, that's what i thought it was a respect thing mm -hmm. it was like no mm -hmm. these soldiers die they see death all around them mm -hmm. and what the therapist was trying to tell me was like stop we're trying to make you better and you probably had some trauma and if you did we'll get to the bottom of it at bottom of it and so I was in this room and I said, I want to try this EMDR, but I don't feel like, I don't know. It just, it's not right for me. It's for vets. And she's like, we start talking in 30 for minutes. Vets and Jamie. <laughs> vets and Jamie. Well, she starts talking to me and she goes, I go, uh, what about the EMDR? She goes, oh yeah, we're not going to do that. And I go, yeah, yeah, I'm not right for that. So yeah, I get it. And then we start talking about stuff and then the next session, you know, and I go, yeah, so we're not going to get into the EMDR stuff, right? I mean, why would we? I mean, I, there's nothing here, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling her. And she's like, yeah, yeah, we're not going to do that. I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> and then we start talking, and then she goes, I'm just talking about a moment. And like I was talking to you, I suddenly went, and then I was just like, boom. And then this happened. I don't want to say it, but like, yeah. and, and 
it's not that it's bad. It's just that I don't want to call anybody out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I just had this moment where I just, I, it was visceral. It was, vi- I mean, I could see it. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking at me t- telling the story, I'm like, and I'm just this little boy. And I was just like, you know, and then the Jew. And then, and then she goes, I think you're ready. And I go, for what? She goes, do you want to do this? And I go, uh, what? she goes, that, that moment you just had right there. I'd like to explore that. And I go, no, I don't even know what to do. She goes, stop. Goes, stop. You don't have to control everything. You don't have to do this. Is just, just try this. And I go, okay. And she came over to me. She's so sweet and so calm. And she goes, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think of this moment. And I just want you to stay in this moment. Think of it. And when you open your eyes, my finger is going to go like this. Don't turn your head with it. I want you to just with your eyes back and forth and you just follow my finger and you think of that moment and I'll walk you through it. And, um, I said, okay. So I closed my eyes and she goes, okay, I want you to go back there. And I took as long as I needed. I didn't feel like I was rushed. Like I show up my eyes now. She's probably ready for me to do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I opened them and she goes, okay, now just follow my finger. Stay in that moment. And all, dude, I'm telling you, I went from, I don't know, to, uh, to hysterical. Like overwhelming emotion came over me. I couldn't. It almost makes me emotional thinking about yeah. it because of how emotional I was. Like she goes, um, are you okay? I go, yeah, no, no, this, this feels good. I feel, I, I just, I don't know. She goes, okay, close your eyes. And we did it again. And we did it again. And like four or five times. And I'm not telling you where you can go. Mm-hmm. I'm saying don't control your mind when mm-hmm. you do it. But I ended up at a place where that moment, it's not that that moment was just gone. Right. It's not that that moment was, um, wasn't real or it was as though what she says is sometimes it's like you knock down a tree. It's like this big tree that you're knocking down and all these other little emotions that were play into that emotion. So for instance, if it was some kind of abuse or if it was some kind of like mm-hmm. neglect, whatever it was, mm-hmm. death, if you had other moments in your life, even though you didn't talk about those moments. It's almost like little trees start to fall down because when you get to the root of what the problem is, a lot of that, those things you let, you're able to let go. And what happens is, and I didn't know this, she goes, all right, I want you to think of that moment again. Close your eyes. Think of that moment. Boom, 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 boom. And I go, she goes, I go, "Ah, I'm sorry. She goes, what? I go, I just, I just can't really, I can't get there. She goes, you can't get there. I go, no, it's, I don't know. It's like, I know that moment's there, but I can't get to that moment. Like I can't. And what I found was as the days went on, even now, whenever I think of that moment, if I try to, which I don't, but if I try, I know it's there, but it's like, it doesn't affect me like that anymore. It just doesn't. It's science. It yeah. fucking works. Yeah. I know you've read about it. Yeah. And people who have had trauma. Yeah. I think if you're willing to talk about it and find, and by the way, this was, this wasn't like, this is the moment I want to work on. Right. This was out of the blue, a right. moment we were talking. I just go this, she goes, let's talk about that. I go that, oh no, that couldn't have affected. Oh my God. Did that affect me <sighs> as a kid? That's so cool. So all I say is be open. It may yeah. not work right away. You may not do it right away, but I, I feel like you're an open person. You've been Very. through so much that I feel like you're going to get to, you're going to. Yeah. Well, I was, say, I was going to say that I have like, I feel like you know me well. You would probably, one of the last things you would describe me as is an angry person, right? Angry? Yeah. I don't see you as angry right. at all. I have so much anger inside of me and I don't know why. And that's what like led me into finding EMDR and like finding a vetted person that I'm going to start with next week. Cause I'm like, what the fuck is this anger? And obviously I do all this type of reading on disease and like 
the emotional components of it and the causes, the root causes, because, you know, some people believe that disease is manifested from trauma and emotions that are held, stuck in your body. Mm -hmm. And anger, shame, and guilt are associated with MS. And those are three things that I deal with. And I don't know why. So after next week, and we'll see from then, I'll keep know. you posted. I want to know. Watch, I'm going to be like What's running marathons thinking? when I'm done with EMDR. <laughs> there are God so, willing. you know. I remember when I was doing the MDR, there was one of the sessions where it was only one session that I really, the other ones I forced, I tried to get back mm, there. Yeah. But what I needed to do was let that moment take over and go. And that was enough. And I'd like to do it again when I'm ready. Yeah. I'd like to do, and I think there are, there's a lot of things that I, that are, uh, that need to be taken care of, that need to be let out. You'll know. Yeah. But I remember there was one thing I was like, was like you know, I remember going, because I'm, I'm not a fucking idiot. I was like like yelling. Not yelling, screaming. I was like, of course I'm fucking smart. Of course I'm this. How could I possibly? I was almost validating myself. Like, of course, how could you be successful like this? How could you do this if you weren't? Do you think you're that stupid? Like, I'm almost telling this little boy that you're not. You're all these things that you're not. How could you have gone on and done all these things? Being dumb and being like all these things. And it was crazy. I was like... It was Aww. truly, I know it's, it's sad. Yeah. It's sad, but it's also like, these are the things you have to like, you have to face these things because if you don't face them, if you don't get them out, then what's the point? Then you're living the rest of your life and you're not being the best you. When you know? I had my like pre-call with the therapist, she was telling me. I have things me, like that. Pre-cum. <laughs> yeah. Pre-call. Yeah, okay. We go from serious to pre-cum. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Uh, she was telling me, she's like, you know, when you see adults have road rage or they're reactive, that's not the adult in them reacting. It's the child. Mm. So healing that trauma heals behavior that you have now that you just feel like is just, you know, sorry, I just have road rage or I just have this or I have that. You know, you don't have to have that. That's something that was learned or some, something happened to you that- I got it from watching, watching my dad, watching my older brother, watching them on the road. You know, I just remember my dad driving. It's like, oh, eat me. <laughs> you know, screaming on the shit. She's like, what the, what the fuck? Watch where you're going, asshole. Like you're seeing this as yeah, a kid. You're like, I, Cutter has it. For sure his dad had it. I mean, come I on. I mean, there's, oh my God, Lenny Dykstra, <laughs> fuck. Is he in jail? No. He's he, out. We, we don't have contact with Lenny right now, but he- uh, I sometimes I'm like, I'll catch a tweet or two. And I saw something where he was like, it's been something amount of months since I've been arrested. So I don't That's know. It's amazing, man. Cause that guy was like everybody's hero, you know? Yeah. And everybody I, goes through shit. Maybe he needs EMDR. Uh, Maybe he needs a lot of things. I, if, you know, he's an addict. When I first met Lenny, I, did we talk about this? Probably. We might have. That's a long time I don't ago. He did. And now people are probably listening and watching because you know, okay. Well, I first met him right before he went into jail. It's when Cutter and I first started dating, like three weeks into dating and his dad went unexpectedly to jail. He thought he was going for a court date and literally was cuffed and sent to jail that day, which is a very dark moment to go through with like your new beau, you know? Yeah. And so then he was in jail for about a year and a half. And when he came out, we had a son and uh, he was f wonderful. I loved sitting and talking with him. I loved hearing him talk about baseball with Cutter and just, he was reserved and kind and a good listener. And then, you know, just life happens and like certain habits start to come back. And mm. I think when, you know, the persona of nails and what people want, and he's trying to give people what they want, but live this life. And I think it just kind of caught up. And then I saw kind of him change and it was a bummer yeah. so, but i i still think of that's who, who i met is who lenny is it's the, the other sweet. shit that changes him so yeah. i i will never say a bad thing about him i think it's the right choice right now for like sure us not to have contact but i do uh if my kids ever ask me about who their grandpa is i'll say he was great yeah he was great. You, that and moment. He was you a saw good dad. you saw the real side. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of times it is a persona and it's something that you're like, this is what they want to see, or this is what I'm so used to playing that the vulnerable side just seems like, oh, I'm a pussy. I can't do this. I can't talk about that. I can't, I just want I want to be, you know, tough we as nails. We don't want to label people good people or bad people. And I just think that's fucked up. I think everybody is light and dark. Everybody has good and bad. Everyone just has choices and everybody has weaknesses. And sometimes the other side wins or the other side loses. Yeah. And, 
you know, he, some of us are not strong enough to fight those. How hard is it though? I have to imagine, I can't even imagine what Cutter goes through. It's, it's hard. It's sad. I mean, like, I mean, it it had to be tough. It had to be tough. I, it was I, had. To, it was something that was significant enough that he had to draw the line, and it was really sad for him and really sad for me. And it was almost like he had to like mourn his dad. Do you know what I mean? It was almost like was he scared of his father? I'm sure there was some level of that. I mean, he's an intimidating guy, and like especially when it was like come to talk around like baseball and this. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Lenny, especially I think in the darker days where Lenny like wasn't sleeping and when they lost their fortune, I think that was like a very scary time for the right. family. Jesus, yeah, it's crazy talking about this stuff. It is it? life, I mean, it's, man. It's but great. it's like I still don't see you with you know. It's funny. I, you say you have these anger issues. That's like yeah. the, if, if you lined up ten. No one knows it. Of course, I feel I, I, it. Obviously, you, you know feel what's it. weird what, though yeah. when I'm acting. It's like my first choice that I want to use is like anger. So I know it's simmering in there. By the way, it's funny you say that because you'll never see me lose my shit. But when you keep my brother wants Eric. By the way, my brother is always has my back. The nicest. The he was in our Eric's game great. nights. Yeah, Eric's great. Um, but one time we were in the van and, uh, I was really hungry. And that's one thing when I'm hungry, I just got to eat. Yeah. So if I tell you, Jamie, we, we should eat probably in half an hour. Are you cool with that? I'm hungry. Yeah. And even if you're not hungry, go, yeah, if you're hungry, you should eat. I know you. Right. And then it's an hour and then it's an hour and a half. Now my brother, it wasn't even that it was time. It was, he was so defiant. I remember specifically he's driving and I'm in the back seat. And I go, hey, dude, can we just stop at a Jack in the Box, man? I'm just going to get a quick spicy chicken jack and some fries, some curlies. And he's like, no. <gasps> just dismissive. What's the I, big I fucking this, deal? And I go, I go, uh, seriously, though, man, I'm really hungry. I thought he was kidding. I go, you know, I'm really hungry. So just like, he's, no, we got to get in the road, man. I go, I know, uh, dude, I'm really hungry. And he kept going like he wasn't listening to me. He's like, and he passed it, got on the road. I go, dude, I told you I'm, I want to get something to eat. And he's just like, yeah, well, we're not going to do that right now. And dude, the next thing you know, there is a football. For some reason, there's a football in the van, and it just goes right by his head. I try, I, I tried to fucking hit him. I, if, if I was Joe Montana, I would have fucking popped him <laughs> in this fucking head. But I mean, if somebody pushes your buttons, will you fucking lose oh, it? When Cutter will not stop, like harping, like he can, he gets on things and then doesn't stop. I lose my. Show shit. me your shit. Show me your temper. I, I can't. Is it scary? It's, no, it's not scary. It's almost funny. Okay. It's almost like comical. I think when I get angry, people laugh because I look ridiculous. Like I'm not somebody that's like g- a good angry. I'm like, I get like very rigid and like, I'm like, uh, uh, and it's well, like, we need to do this. Yes. Why isn't this happening? Like, yeah, like we were fighting last night about something and I was like, and he, he, he realized I was right. And he, I was looking at him being like, so can you apologize? And he was staring at the TV being like, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I was like, no. He's like, I said, I'm sorry. What more do you want? I was like, if you don't look at me and say you're sorry, I don't buy that you're sorry. Like, how will you think I'm supposed to accept an apology of you staring at fucking Apple TV? Look at me. This is me angry. Your neck. Yeah. This is me angry. I can see it. You know what? I have to say, I'm not saying it in a chauvinistic way, but it's kind of like, if I was Cutter, I might be like, it's kind of sexy. She's angry. <laughs> we had sex after. That's I know. I, I looked at you and I was like, I don't know. She's kind of feisty and well, funny. Well, you know what and- I said? I was like, I'm still going to have sex with you after this, but it, it, you have to look at me and apologize. Like, I was like, and then I did the whole thing. I was like, here, look, look at me and pretend I did something kind of fucked up to you. And I'm going to look at the TV and just be like, sorry, Cutter. All right. I'm sorry. I was like, do you feel apologized to? Now, does he, did he learn from that? So the next time he's like, he looks at you and goes, hey, I'm sorry. He's called me so much from work today. So I think so. So this happened recently. Last night. This was last night yeah. when you freaked out. And then. And then Bo pissed you off this morning. Yes. So you've had a rough morning and evening. I've been. Were you going to cancel fucking... the podcast? No. I would. What do you mean? This is like witching hour afternoon with both my kids. I'm so happy to be here. Right. right now. This is therapy too, isn't it? But yeah. I love seeing you. I love seeing you. It's really great seeing you. It is great seeing you. It is. You have a podcast. I have two. Okay. That that wasn't in my notes. Well, I have Mama said, which is um. It's a year old. I do it with my friend Jenna. And it's just all about like the ups moms. and downs of parenting. Right. Not just moms. We just have Bob Saget's our guest this week that oh, we launched. Man. He has he, a potty mouth. He was 
fucking awesome. Yeah, I yeah. mean, he's equal parts dirty ass comic and like so reflective and kind. And very smart. It's very smart. Very smart. He's a wonderful guest. So that I have Mama said, and then I have my newer baby podcast called Pajama Pants that right. I do with Robert Eiler, who played my brother in Sopranos, and our friend Cassim. And, and that's new. And that's new. We're like twenty one episode, twenty two episodes in. We just had Doctor Drew on though, I, which was kind of cool. Can you help me up with that? I want to get Doctor Drew to be perfect for the show. And if I was we on, can get Doctor Drew, you can get. I was Dr. on Love Drew? Line three or four times, and I can't get the fuck. I don't know I'll how to get in touch Kassim. with him. He knows somebody to email. I don't know how we he drove all the way to our like our garage studio in like Silver Lake all the way in the east side like so if, if we can get him you can get him fuck yeah I love he Dr. was an Drew. amazing guest he's great he oh. took I remember when I was doing love line stuff I was like hey is it true if like right after sex if you pee you probably won't get a disease he's like that's retarded why are you talking about? he didn't say retarded <laughs> he, he loves can't. EMDR by the way okay. I told him I was doing it and he was so stoked good but you know Rob is people just think like he like they haven't heard from him in a while but Rob um has been sober for almost seven years. I mean, but he had a major drinking problem and then opioid and Jesus. benzo addiction and he kicked it and he's wonderful. And then Kasim had um, some drinking issues and then there's me. So like we're three very different people that we just talk about everything and nothing. Yes. By yeah, the way, we- what kind of sparked this was they were like, can you ask your friend, by the way, you didn't text me back. I didn't? They, no. They Why? were like, can you have your friend, ask your friend, Michael Rosenbaum? And I was like, yeah. I texted you and you didn't write me back. What are you talking about? Go look. I'm gonna call history. you on a lie right now. Call me out. That was another song we had. Unless, we never made it. Oh, I just you got your text from an lie. hour ago. By the All way. All right. Well, then I did text you. Maybe not about that. Are you just gonna so scroll what back? Was your, what was your question? <laughs> was will you come on our podcast? Hey, bu- babe, long time no speak. So Rob Liar, Eiler, Eiler, who played my brother in Sopranos, lives here now. We are doing a podcast together as well. But he mentioned to me that he loves yours. If you ever want him on, I'm happy to introduce you guys. And then yesterday I said, see you tomorrow, man. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't respond, I guess. Mm-hmm. I thought I did. He can't come here because he's like freakishly I... allergic to dogs. dogs. But I, I really, of course I wanted to do this. I, I thought I responded. This you was didn't. this was two months ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was you're, like, see you you're tomorrow, You're lucky I lady. brought you back. I mean, of course I do your podcast. I'll be on tomorrow if okay, you great. want. Okay, Well, we'll figure it out. You know? You'll come on. So yes, I have pajama pants and it's so fun. And pajama we, pants. We talk about all kinds of crazy shit. Do you love it? I love it. Isn't it cool? It is cool. It's a really, I look forward to that. Like it doesn't, uh, I have zero expectations when I go into either of them. Do you know what I mean? It's not about a result when you podcast. It's like so nice to have conversation yeah. and, and I'm getting better unedited. at that because I always say to Ryan, I go, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't, don't really? know what to talk about. And I, and I always just start talking. That's what, po- it's, but, you know, it's it letting people me. listen in on it. This is what you and I would have talked about if we sat down for lunch, probably a million percent. So that's what people get to listen in an intimate conversation. Yes, that's what I, podcasting I, I is. To you like I would, I mean, yes, almost exactly. This is not any different No. than, you know, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I do. I There's something about it that to me is just honest and innocent and pure and just cool. When people actually listen, and they're like, dude, this touched my life. The interview with Jamie Lynn opening up about her life and MS and this and just like, oh my God, it gave me hope. And I only dude. listen to podcasts in my car. I never would you, listen would you to music quit anymore. acting if like, somebody says you're going to make a ton of money doing this podcast, no. but we need your full time? No. Oh, I don't know. Like, what's a ton of money? I don't know. What's a ton of money, Ryan? <laughs> what, what, like a couple million dollars a year? Yeah. I'll give you a million dollars a year. But I can't act anymore. A million dollars a year, but I can't, no. A million cash no. a year, but, but you can't act? I still want to enjoy my life. Yeah, but, oh, so acting, you enjoy it. Yes. Do you enjoy the long hours? Um, I don't mind it. Well, I think it's more, if I'm, cl- I, I Mm, I really want a job in LA. You know what I want? I want to be in a fucking sitcom for the next few years just because my kids are little. Isn't that the dream job? Do you like multicam stuff? No. Why? Just the, just the, um, the, the I hate qu- to say this cause I'm going to sound like a dick. I've done it before. Yeah. I, I just think it's, it's not the most, it's I not just, the I, deepest I, work. I, you know, I just think it's, people love it. So what, what, what do I know? Big Bang Theory is a huge hit. Millions of people love it. They make millions of, what does my opinion matter? My opinion is, I, uh, it's just, it's like, what is it? 
What am I doing here? That's what, right. No, I get it. I want a little substance. I've done it. Are you acting still? Yeah, I mean, I am, but I'm. I'm, Are you directing? uh, Yeah, I'm working on stuff. And I I went through stuff. I told you the treatment thing. I was not feeling well. I had neck surgery. So now I'm getting in a stronger place. And I'm working on that. And I'm figuring out what what I want to do. You got so your I, laser stuff done. You're my ready face, to be yeah, in front of the camera. See that? Sorry, but yeah, I'm working <laughs> on stuff. Like there's a, a, a show that I wrote, and I just got a great showrunner who's really amazing. amazing. And I can't say anything, but we're gonna start pitching that. I got an animated series that we're pitching, and so there's a lot of things that I'm awesome. like, and I like creating, you know. But I do I do love acting if it could be just like, hey, uh, so you're just gonna act from twelve to four today. That's why I love sitcoms. Well, here's the thing. Sitcom, though, you're doing it in front of a live studio audience. That's and that, the best that's part n- of it. To me, that's too much nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking. Oh, They're changing the script around. That. There's like 35 oh, pages. You got to memorize all this shit. It scares me, man. I used to, I used to love it. But I, no, I don't know if I used to love it. There's just something. I like the, uh, you're right. It's the easiest schedule. If that's how your mind to, works. I can be home for bedtime every night, that, except one night a week. It's different for mom. For mom. Yeah. My beau would fucking love it to come to How tape many night. great sitcoms are there anymore? Not many. How many? I have not. I don't know. I don't watch any? TV hardly. What are they, Ryan? Like multicam? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what they are I anymore. I your mother was the people like that one. I liked that. Is I like that canceled? One. Yeah, that's been done oh, for a while. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Big Bang, Bang just finished. Okay. That, one, that one just finished too. Mom, way, mom, is the mom is good. Cedric the Entertainer good. Big Bang Theory scares mom? the shit out of me. Those guys, do you hear what he's memorizing every week? Fuck But that. you get the whole week to practice the it. The whole week, they're changing lines up till Thursday night. His muscle is strong Yeah, he's for that. smarter than I am. He's got that muscle. He's got that lucky you thing. Can you can work that muscle too. Anyone can do work that muscle. It drives me up a fucking wall. All right, that well, well you a, and I will never be in a sitcom together. That would give me a heart attack. A heart attack. Wouldn't I'd we ra- have so much fun? Yeah, but I'd rather do like a horror movie and you're there for three months. I'd rather do like a, uh, even a, what else? A, uh, a, uh, Let's half manifest. hour. What do you want? A half hour. Like the one I wrote, something that's okay. like, hey, let's go shoot this for three or four months and Single be done cam? for the rest of the year. You want a streaming? Yeah, Netflix. It's HP, like 10 so episodes. Eight to it, 10 episodes a year. Bust my ass. Know all the stuff before I get there. I'm and like, then just do this. And then boom. What the, that's and the then dream. Do this. That's the dream. Love it. Putting it out there. I'm just saying, that's what I'd love to do. I'd love I'd to. I'd love like, that that's for what you. I, do. I was on that show in Pastor. It was great. I yes. was blessed. Oh, I was what so a great show. It was great. Thank you. And I loved it. And I loved the people. I just... It got canceled after two seasons and that would have been a great job. I would have done it for six years, seven yeah, years, Yeah, you know? Yeah. But like, uh, when you get older, it's just, it's harder to do certain things. I'm, I'm you know, I'm getting like close to 50. So I those can't long, believe that. those like one hour when people are, like, say, Hey, will you do a one hour drama, 22 episodes a year? It's a and big commitment. I just, I, I yeah. just don't want to do it. And look again, if I had to feed a fucking family, I'm a single loser here. If I had a family if I had, I mean, I do support some of my family, but if I had to work like, like that, I would do anything. There's nothing I wouldn't do if I had to work. Yeah. I would work at McDonald's. I've worked at McDonald's. I worked at a go-kart place. I was a mechanic at a go-kart track in in college. I worked at a, at a roller rink. I was the DJ at a roller rink. I worked at a grocery store. I worked at McDonald's. I worked, I worked at a telemarketing place. I, I want to see that show. All the incarnations Dude. of Michael Rosenbaum, oh all the jobs I, yeah, he's had. I don't give a shit. I'm, look, I'm lucky. I'd, I'd like to, like when I was talking about the podcast, if I may, if I can, uh-huh. yeah, then I'd love to just sit in this room all day and just talk to people who are in, more interesting like you. You know? Not, you know definitely Ryan. not more interesting. Ryan, you're interesting. Kind of. Are you always this into Ryan? What? No. no. Actually, not. This is the most I've talked to Ryan, this I think, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Isn't it's that very true? Into you. Yeah. Yeah. This is the most you've talked since it's the been shirt. A, it, Wear it's that been shirt again. It, it's what it is. I think it is. Are well, you excited it, about bingo night tomorrow night? Very excited. I'm ex- more excited about tacos, though. I love the tacos. Oh, yeah. Through. I'm having a taco truck you and bingo me night. When I was so I told, my, I told my friends, I said, listen, here's the deal. I said, 15 bucks all you could eat tacos. That includes everything in my cleanup and all that shit. Bring an extra five bucks for bingo night. We got 30 people coming. So fun. We're going to have big games of bingo for real money. I bought a really expensive oh my bingo. God. To uh, me, the this, this is life. So Tacos, fun. podcasts, bingo. I'm with you. Look, I just want to, you know what it is? I want to do things because I really want to have fun and I know I'm going to have fun doing them. Mm-hmm. If there's an element of fun in there, mm-hmm. I'll do it. I don't mm-hmm. care if I make money or not, if it's fun. Do you do game nights anymore? Um, I haven't done a game night in a while. We have art night. Hard, People man. come over and draw and stuff. I'm 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 not good, but wow. it doesn't matter. It's not about being great. It's about being in the moment. Wow. You know what we're gonna do here? No. I mean, there's so many things here. You know, my therapist called about. You know, she goes. She says you're always should should you shooting on yourself. Mm-hmm. You're always shooting on yourself, Rosenbaum. Mm-hmm. Shooting. 
Like, should I, I don't know. Uh, should I do that? Should I do that? Do shit on yourself? My dad, the one piece of advice that always rings in my head from my dad is always limit your shoulda, woulda, couldas. So no, I don't shoulda all the time. I, I end up like taking chances a you lot. You do it. Mm-hmm. I like that about you. Thanks. Um, you do strength training to stay strong. I do. Does the strength training really help with the MS? Yeah, I love feeling strong. While I st- my son might have mobility issues still a little bit or balance issues, right. I I like seeing muscles on my body. Does that help pain go away? The strength or does I don't it make have your pain? You don't have pain. I don't have pain. You just have like lack of control sometimes of certain things your body does. Yep. So no pain. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, look. You know what? Maybe if somebody else was in my body, they'd think this was painful. I don't. You baffle me, woman. <laughs> you baffle me because, I mean, I know you say everybody would be this strong, but you're just, you know what it is? I think you're just so beautiful inside and out. That's so nice. Like thank I genuinely, you. see how you said thank you? No, no, look at me. I'm not. No, it's beautiful. so nice. Thank you. But I do. I mean thank it because you. I look at you and it's, it's, you are, you're just, you are, I know you say you have anger issues. I know you say you have things that you need to work on. You go EMDR and you're working on yourself. You're trying to be the best you can be. Mm-hmm. You want to feel the best you can be. And that's mm-hmm. the whole game, right? That's the, that's what you have to do. Mm-hmm. But also to have that attitude. I, I think that maybe that's your parents or something. I don't know. Cause you're so, well, I also have really good friends, you know, for my 36th birthday, uh, I came home to find all my friends in my backyard sitting in a circle on like blankets. And they literally went around a circle to tell me how they felt about me. Oh my God, I'm going to cry. It was the most magical moment still to this day of my life. And all of it, basically at the end, it was, they all just were like, we wish you could see yourself the way we see you. And that's what I try. I mean, I'm still not there. Trust me. But like, that's, I was even thinking that as you're telling me this, I was like, I wish I could digest what he's saying to me right now and believe it wholeheartedly. But um, maybe as humans, we, we were not wired to really do that. Or, or some people can, and it's amazing. I just, I, I, I try to, I appreciate what you're saying. I wish I could believe it about myself for sure. Do you love yourself? Um, You know, it's like, I think about like what my legacy would be for my kids. And I think that they would always say like, she was always, she always tried her best. And I think that's like all anyone can do. Right. So I guess I love myself for that. Uh, I'm hard on myself. I'm hard on myself every day. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm good at like separating. I understand what's my ego and what's not. Um, My ego is very mean to me. And so I, I've been dealing with that my whole life and I have the awareness now it still sucks, but, um, that's why I'm like, you know, I'm working on it. I'm figured trying, but like, you're crying. Well, you I love sad. you. I don't want to make you sad. Well, you made me happy. You know what else really is helping me is, sad. is, um, weed. Weed? Mm-hmm. You smoke like, weed. Yeah. Bec- yeah. Like every night, like it's my... I didn't, I didn't smoke weed till I was 34. I'm not a big weed smoker either, but I wasn't. what kind I of weed, should... sativa or is it indica? Depends on the time of day. Well, I don't smoke during the day if I'm with my kids. Do, but... you, do you have a certain brand or is there something that. I really like Lowell Farms. Okay. And they make these Write mini, they make oh, yeah. mini joints. So it's like just, you know, a little bit for me. They also have these hemp ones that don't get you high, but I get so fucking creative on them. Oh. Okay, hang on a second. Will you write this down after yes, you leave? I'll bring you a pack next time I see you. Well, but you yes. know why I am teared up here? Why? Because I thought, you know, I imagined, I tried to imagine, what you said was so profound. How beautiful is it that your friends sat you, yeah. sat with you, around you, telling you all the reasons you should love yourself, mm-hmm. the things that you don't see. And I have a feeling like I... I, I, f- I feel like you and I are similar like that. I just, like, I don't think I'm that great. I really don't. No matter how much I say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do charity and I'm going to do this. Right. And I could sit there and say all these things, and I do, and I really am trying to be better, and I'm trying to be a good person. I'm trying to, for me, right. but I don't know if I. I wish everyone could have what I had that night. I think if everyone could oh have that God. at least once in their adult life. 
It was, you know, what was cool too is my son sat there and watched it all. Did you cry? Oh, I was a fucking mess. Did anybody else cry? Everyone did. Did Cutter cry? Yeah, I think he did. He's not an easy crier, but but I think he did. He's not like John, John Cryer. <laughs> is John Cryer? A no, crier? just it's, you know, I always say things like, "Oh, I'm gonna go. Uh, I, I got a Christian bail. I gotta get <laughs> out of here." God, what a John Cryer! Use names or as verbs. Or, That's I like that. That's um, funny. What was the one that you remember the most when someone was sitting there in your backyard that night mm -hmm. and telling you? I could see you know it. Mm -hmm. What was the one that My resonated? Friend Nikki, who's not like emotional like doesn't cry she's like the party girl she's like the fun girl right and she looked at me and she's like i know that you opt out of so many things because you think you're gonna slow us down and she's like but if you could only know that it's like an honor to hold you up like it would be an honor to give you a piggyback at coachella or it'd be like or a stagecoach like you always say like i'm not gonna go because i don't want to slow you guys down and that's the truth and she's like it would literally nothing would make me happier than to throw you on my back and have you experience that with me. And that really hit me. And I just, Oh man. It was so sweet. It was so sweet. Right. So sweet. I, I have, have to, really I, good friends. I might have him edit all these tears that are coming down. I don't think <laughs> I I've had tears that. coming That's down. So sweet. I, I don't do that. I mean, I cry every once in a while, but God. Well, it's not just about me. It's just about like really great humans that like, you know, took their time that night. And I don't know. I, I think that's, I think that's beautiful. I think everybody should do that and with no their one, friends. By the way, they didn't intend to do that. They thought they were just going to sit around and we thought we were going to do like a met my friend, Ryan, who's like this, he's just like God to me. He's like changed my life the day I met him. Um, he's like kind of like a life coach waking up with Ryan, follow him. He's the greatest human. Um, he was going to lead like a meditation. And he said, he's like, I'm just going to begin by telling Jamie what she means to me. And then somebody else went like, oh, I want to tell her. And uh, then that's what it turned into. So I think what also it, it wasn't like a forced situation. Like everybody think of what you're going to say to Jamie. So everything was like, just like quick, like or people would just be like, oh, I want to say this to you. So it was just in a very inspired moment. It was happened very naturally it, because I, I would be horrified. If people were like, we're all going to sit around and tell you how we love yeah. you. I'd be like, oh my God, no, 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 no. I'd yep. rather get you stoned and let's eat a Ralph's cake and like, just like <laughs> watch, you know, old school. Oh. So look, I think that's a beautiful thing. So if you're listening, I mean, if you, I mean, I think that's important. It is. Ryan, what would you do if, uh, you know, on your birthday or something, everybody just kind of sat around and just said, Hey man, a couple of your close friends said, I want you to know this about you. and just opened up and were vulnerable about you. I would say you're full of shit. Um, no, uh, I mean, that, that'd be really nice. I mean, that sounds like, I don't, I don't know when I would do that, but do you love yourself? Not all the time. No, you like yourself. You, I, I like myself fine. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All you could do is work on yourself. All you could do is every day, just take a step in the right direction. All you could do is say, try hey, I, your best. I, I fucked up yesterday. Today I'm going to do this. Try your best. You know what? I didn't like how I talked. Apologize. You know, I didn't like how, you know, say something. You know what? I want this. You know what? It's not about you right now. It's about them. You know, yesterday, Jess was sick. My assistant, Jess, for two days. And, you know, sometimes I'm a little helpless. But, you know, there's podcasts going on and there's dogs running around. There's people fixing shit. And there's like, I'm juggling. And I, I managed. But all I could think about was like texting her. Hey, how are you feeling? That's so good. How are you feeling? I'm so glad. I mean, I'm sure part of me was like going, hey, uh, are, you, are you better yet? I need you to be better. <laughs> but the reality was I really wanted her to feel better. I did. And if she was gone for the rest of the week, I would manage. That's all the work you've done, needs putting be, it back out. That's sure. great. I mean, sure. I mean, it's just like you're fucking sick. And when I'm sick, you're there. I mean, you know, all right, this is called shit talking. This is it. Shit okay. talking with uh, Rosenbaum. This is just uh, some questions. There's not many. You can answer them quickly. You don't have Great. to go I deep. I love a rapid This fire. is from all my lovely uh, patrons on Patreon. They're okay. fantastic, and they get to ask these questions. Okay. Megan, how was it appearing in a Lonely Island music video? Oh, so fun. I had no... It was, like, so out of the blue, and I had no idea what I was going into. Jizz in my pants? It took me a second. Yeah, I was like, oh, it was you. Yeah, yeah, I Yeah, remember. I was a checkout girl. <laughs> Cash or credit? <laughs> Sophie, do you have a dream Broadway role you would love to play? Uh, well, it was Eponine and Les Mis, but I think I'm too old, so maybe Fontaine? Fontaine's the lead. No, she dies like one quarter of the way through. That's the lead. All right. Look at Drew, Drew Barrymore in Scream. And Hathaway did win the Oscar for Fontaine. Mm -hmm. What was that song she sang? I dreamed a dream. I cried when she sang that. Oh, it's so emotional. I dreamed a dream. R Rose, mom, you're out. You're lower <laughs> your key. I dreamed a dream. No. Danny. Danny. 
Danny. I see there are now Sopranos conventions happening. Would mm -hmm. Jamie Lynn Sigler ever be interested in attending one? It's not that I was like, I'll be interested or not. I was working when they had this first Sopranos con. I, it just feels so weird. Why? It, just, it, it feels very removed from what the show was. Like it being like this like critically acclaimed, like beautiful piece of art. Like not to say that like Comic-Con and these things are like not honoring like great, great work. It just doesn't. It's For you, it doesn't compute. Mm -mm. I get you. I just think that for me, it's like it's a chance for people that never meet you. Right, totally. Who just have a blast and uh, hear how much they love you. I get also <laughs> just very be, uncomfortable yeah, like, with people, that. Yeah, people it's are different. It's nothing against like me being like, I don't give yeah, a shit about the it's fans. It's just not for you. No, no. That's it. Not at and all. And that's, I respect that 100%. Some people just not, yeah, fuck that. Like I don't need to be paid to be like like a spectacle and like wave. Like that feels awkward to me. Sure. I don't mind it. Mary and Lisa <laughs> ask at this point in her life, is MS a major part of how she sees herself or is it just a piece of the puzzle that is Jamie Lynn Sigler? It's, uh, it's, it's definitely a major part and it's what I'm trying to figure out how to have it not be. It's impossible to not have it not be um, right now, but I'm trying to have it not be. Raj, my wife and I dealt with some negativity from friends and family after we decided to stop breastfeeding our son because mm. of health issues she was dealing with. I remember you being more vocal about having to stop breastfeeding because of the need to get back on medication for MS. What is your advice for current and potential moms dealing with the stigma of feeling as if you're supposed to breastfeed your child as long as possible? Look to Amy Schumer. She just like put something out about how she was like, you know what? This is not feeling right for me and it's not right for my family. So I'm going to stop. And like, God, oh, she's just so fucking awesome because like this is her first rodeo and she had the wherewithal and like the self-love an awareness to be like, no, nope, not for me. And my baby's all right. And I'm not going to feel bad about it. Like you, uh, all this like guilt is, has nothing to do with all the other chatter. It's all on you. And so if you, a fed baby is a good baby. So, you know, you've got two things for me. You're going to give me uh, your dope. Um, what is it? Your dope. Uh, the lols. Yeah. And you didn't know what dope yeah. you're using. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to come on your podcast. Great. And the podcast is called again. Pajama pants. Pajama pants is the one that's 21 episodes in. Yeah. And you're having a blast doing it. So much it. fun. They had Dr. Drew on, Bob Saget. Bob, Bob Saget, Saget was, was on, on Mama one. Said. So you can listen to both her podcasts. Look, if you love her like I do, you're going to love her after this interview. Listen to her stuff, man. Subscribe and, uh, you know, support, man. Just keep these, it people, real. these folks here who subscribe, they're, they're so loyal. They really are. That's they're just awesome. awesome. And that's why. Do you call them things? Are they like a. Uh... Well, you know, Do they have a name? I, I usually I try to respond as much as I can. It's hard, but um, you know, the the Patreon thing that that I'm a part of now, it's easier to just kind of like go, hey, you know, and and I no, can say. No, I mean, extra... do you have a name for them? Like uh, your oh, fans? Oh, like Rosen Bombs? Yeah, the, uh, the Bomb Squad. Uh, the no, Bomb Squad. I just made that That's up. That's cool. The Bomb Squad. Wow. I just came up with that. It's good. You guys like the Bomb Squad, or Put it maybe on a hat. Rosie's uh, Rosen's Rosies? The uh, ro Rosen's stop Roses. Stop trying to top it. You did the it already. The Bomb Squad. I, I can't Gold. think of anything better. Can Gold. you? There's Jamie Lynn better. Sigler, you are a freaking delight. I, I adore I you. Love, thank you for allowing me to be inside of you. Anytime. I hope you guys love that as much as I did. Inspirational. Yes, that was a tear. Could you see the tear down my eye? Let me know. Uh, real quick shout out to my top tier patrons. Here we go. Allison, Andrew, Angelina, Barry, Bob, Bob, Vortex, Chris, Dion, Emily, Emily, Jason, 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 you're both important. Jerry, Jill, Trisha, Yukiko, Kevin, Kristen, Lauren, Lee, oh, hi, Lee. She's upset because I didn't mess her name up and call her Leah. Yeah. Mark with a C, Michael, Nancy, I love my Nancy, and Nico, and Raj, I just saw, talk to Raj. Robert, Samantha, Sarah, Scott, Sean, Tiana. You guys, uh, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. I am. You see that the patrons on there, they get uh, certain uh, tiers. You get to ask questions at the end for every guest. Um, so uh, join Patreon. Join me. Uh, join the revolution. Uh, I'm really excited. And make sure. Uh, was that a Bernie impression? Huh? Is that what that was? Join the revolution. I don't even. Does that sound like him? I don't know. I thought that's what you were trying to do. I don't even know. Is that what he says? Maybe. Look, uh, whatever. whatever. What else? That's pretty much it.
you know, thanks for listening to the stage at last week. Uh, Miami, May 9th. Remember Smallville Nights and signing autographs. And also in St. Louis at the Wizard World, June 5th. Smallville Nights as well. Get your tickets while they last. Um, all that stuff. I want to say thank you, Ryan, again. Because, you know, I know how hard this video thing is. Because we're not... If you guys notice... We're not just doing the, I'm not saying it's cheap, but it's fucking cheap. <laughs> it's easy to put the top and the two, one screen and I just run it. It's easy. Ryan could do that in an hour. Correct. Yeah. Doesn't edit it, whatever. He edits this. So we're going back and forth. It's an interview. It's like you're getting inside. I think it's great. Uh, I hope we continue to do it. He's going to start uh, working on ways to make it faster, but uh, you're getting great at it. Thank so you. You, I hope you continue. I mean, it's a skill I had, and I said I I, I could do it. And I, you did. You're I not, was not lying. Well, you're not resenting me, right? No, nope. not at all. You tell me when you're starting to resent me. Yeah. I mean, I you know I I, I just want you know I always want people to be happy. I think yeah. that's a problem of mine, but it's also a good thing. Like I you know I want Ryan to go. I love working on the show. I know that if Michael if this blows up or if Michael gets something else, he's going to bring me along or consider me. Right. I would like to be considered. Sure. I always would consider you. I, I honestly. I am for your consideration. I absolutely I adore you. And um, the music you're listening to underneath is just uh, Ryan and I playing a little guitar. So um, we haven't even put this music under it yet. But when you're listening to it, see, now it's playing, but we haven't even done it. So we have no idea what we're going to do, but we're going to do it. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you subscribe, please, to YouTube. Hit the notification thing, subscribe, spread the word. Let's get those numbers up. Help me get the numbers up on audio and video and blow this sucker up. Uh, working on another uh, live podcast, p- potentially in Phoenix. Tell me who else, who's out there in Phoenix. Write in uh, a hello at insideofpodcast.com, I believe, is for fan letters. Uh, follow me on the handles, the uh, at Inside of You Podcast on Twitter, and then at Inside of You Pod on, on Instagram. All that stuff. Thanks so much for all your encouragement, your letters, your... Uh, am I... You hear that? What? I don't want to be that guy where you're that's the worst sound ever. In fact, people are listening. That's it. I'm done. Rosenbaum <laughs> fucking off. Um, we've got so many great guests ahead of you ahead now. Like, believe me, the stories get better and better. Um, we, I got someone that's coming up that is, was a really tough grab and a really tough episode for you to, to edit because it's an hour and a half hour, 35, it's an hour and a half, yeah. but it is gold. It is gold. And it's a big actor who everyone loves if you haven't seen the show, I'm not going to tell you anymore. I can't talk about it anymore. I'm not going to do it. But if you're on Patreon, you'll learn. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. All right, guys. Thank you from Ryan, Teus, and myself. Thank you for us uh, allowing us to both be inside of you. And um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week and spread the word for the podcast. And be healthy, be grateful, be happy, and um, do your best, man. That's all I'm trying to do. It's called life. It's not called winning. Wait. What? I'm going to come up with the worst quotes after every episode from now on. So that's it. I'm not going to think. <laughs> it's not called life for a reason. Yeah, that's why it's not called winning, folks. Fucking worst <laughs> quote ever. All right, I'm ending with that. Then Fuck you got to carve them into some wood and just hang them above your sink. Could you? <laughs> yeah, somebody out there is going to go, oh, I remember a shitty quote from the week before. And now I'm ready. So I'm gonna, let's take one. Hey, remember, guys, like if you think about it, if you just say something without thinking, that's what the quote has to be. You know, guys? They never said life was easy. They just said it was long, if you're lucky. How's that? <laughs> it's good. It's like it's like a mashup of several different <laughs> it's, adages. It's too long. I'm gonna fuck off now. Thank you for allowing me to be inside of you. Good day. <laughs>